There it is. Okay. Is someone on Zoom? Yeah, I don't think so. You don't see anybody? Okay. Okay, so no one needs to see me. So I'll get myself gone. Hey, everybody got something to eat and let's uh, get going so we can get you home. Uh, so thanks to our guests for being here. Welcome. You. Glad you're here. Thanks for inviting them, Kim. Did you uh, introduce yourself to everybody or would you like to do that so everybody knows who you are? I'm Amanda Smith. I work with Driver Lucy. Um, I also work with Pillar the Post doing their marketing. Oh, marketing. Good. I love hearing it. She oh, like again, every I'm single time. Maria Velasquez with Home Smart. I'm also the event director for Women's Council Tarrant County Fort Worth. So if you have any questions, y'all may want to join. Let me know. <laughs> we need you. We need men. Yeah, it's not. It's We need men. It's like trans. Oh, y'all yeah, mean men? Sports, though. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> <You'd be confident>. <laughs> <laughs> if you weren't allowed in, I wouldn't let you in. Good. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome, gals. Glad you're here. Okay, so um, today I'm going to be talking about something quite different, and this isn't the typical um, goal setting for the next year that you usually are involved in. And it's it's quite different. So a little background. Um, last March 14th, Kim with two M's and Kim with one M, Kimberly, and I happened to be uh, in, where was it, Orlando? Where were we? Orlando. Yeah, in Orlando for the Exit Southeast Rally. Um, it's secondary to the Exit Convention. But what I would recommend to everyone here, um, I'm not going to say the convention is bad, but the convention is gotten really expensive. Jerry, how much did you see that it was for early bird? Well, $12.50. $12.50. And so um, it's, it's getting more difficult. And I get it. The cost of facilities, the cost of everything is, you know, going up and up and up. Uh, but... I think the exit southeast region rally was 300. 300 bucks, and even if it goes to 500. So when you're thinking of going to convention or even going to the rally, think about you know what's going to be the benefit for me. That's when I go to any of those, I'm just thinking of the money, and then I have to look at the benefit, the A to the B, which we'll talk about in a second. And I can tell you the one benefit of going to the southeast region. Um, was discovering Michael Burt, who we're going to be talking about his Burt book today. And I've gotten so much information, and I think I've probably gotten much more than $300 back from the convention and then the cost with going, so $1,000. Uh, I think I got a real benefit. And I hope that you can benefit from what Kim and Kimberly and I got by being there. So today we're going to talk rather than goal setting and lots of numbers. We're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to talk about um, how Michael Burt suggests that you search for clarity in your business and in your life. He's going to talk about finding your purpose. How do you find your purpose? Um, identifying your target. And we're going to look at just a little bit at that today and knowing your magic number. Now, typically the magic number we do talk about with goal setting, you know, we talk about how many transactions is it going to take for you to earn X amount of dollars. And we might talk about that uh, just a little bit. But how many here know what their number was for 2023? How many transactions did they need to get to where they wanted to be? Mike, how many transactions did you need to do? And my, what I did. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. All right. 25 for 2024. Okay. So 25 transactions. Have you put a pencil to, have you put a pencil to the math of what that means? Yes, sir. What does it mean? What does it mean? It's, as far as dollars? It's downstairs, but 
I guess I'm gonna have to oh 100,000 trying to okay. get me back to six figures. Okay, well, I'm guessing it could be wrong. I don't know the area that you're gonna work. Uh -huh. But twenty five is probably going to be more than a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, that, that was kind of like, oh, I'm sorry. Let me bring that back. It was for my net commission. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Net. So we'll talk just a little bit about what mm -hmm. Michael Burke calls your magic number. So we can call it all kinds of stuff, but Michael Burke calls it your magic number. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell you what this isn't today. Um, what this isn't are what you're seeing on the screen. It isn't a goal setting um, or a business planning workshop for 2024. And on the screen, you see several of dozens and dozens of business planning and goal setting sessions that are available to us for free from just about anybody who calls himself a coach or a real estate guru of any type. You see the, the, the bald man, that, that's Jimmy Burgess, who I have a lot of respect for. Um, but I got to tell you, I, I saw his business planning session for 2024, and it's just like everybody else's, and they usually are. What you were given last year from me was basically built from several other agents' goal-setting materials. I just kind of mixed, mixed them up. Um, so that's what these people do, and it's not what we're going to do. However, if you do want to be involved in a business planning workshop, here's one to go to. So if you just want to write this down, I've got the URL there, which you can't see. It's covered up. And I guess you can. Yeah. Um, and you don't need to see it. If you go to uh, Wise Agent, Tammy Bonnell, which, you know, exits partners with Wise Agent, has done a goal planning uh, strategy session there. You should be getting emails for this too. I've gotten some emails. Okay. And sometimes we miss them. So if you miss them, just know okay. you, can you, can, you can go there. Anybody, you guys included, you don't have to be part of Exit. And Tammy is, uh, is really our, uh, she's the CEO of our company and she's good. But I got to tell you, her, her planning session is like everybody else's, except Tammy has grace, uh, a lot of grace in which she does the presentations. So uh, you can go to YouTube, you can search Tammy Bonnell, you can go to Wise Agent, you'll find it there if you need a goal setting. So this is Michael Burt. Michael Burt, I think is probably five foot nine, maybe. He's a bulldog. He's a definite bulldog. And uh, a former basketball coach, uh, coach for a number of seasons. I believe he won eight high school championships in women's basketball. Uh, but he decided at some point that he had a gift to teach and inspire and motivate people. And he thought he might be able to use it in a different direction and to make a lot more money than he was making coaching high school women's basketball. So his book is called a to B. And the book is really, really simple. Um, I'll talk a little bit about myself today and not to pat myself on the back, but just some a couple experiences for me. Um, and I'm going to talk about a book that I wrote in a minute. But I can tell you that his book, um, the one negative thing I'll say, I when I wrote mine, I worked with a professional writing coach for two years. He doesn't adopt any of the things you need to do when you write a book. It's all chopped up. It's in different places. It doesn't flow very well. So hopefully I had to break down this in something I hoped it will kind of flow. But it was difficult, especially when I got home from the event last night and went to my computer. The first thing I hit on my computer completely erased this presentation. So... Um, if you got anything or saw that I was up at four o'clock this morning, it's because I had to rebuild this thing for you. So um, it, it, I knew it would happen. I When I looked at my computer when I got home, I thought I shouldn't touch anything because I know it's going to go away. And uh, Maybe I willed it. So Michael Burt leads with, you're just one decision away from success. So you know the kind of year you've had and you can gauge, you know whether you've been successful or not. 
Only you can gauge that based on what you want to do. So here's the premise of his book. And you might just jot it down so you don't forget what A and B is, because I do. Um, a is your current position. So that's the current position you're in in your business. It can be the current position you're in with your life. It can be the current position you're in with your geographic farm, which we'll talk about, your knocking doors, whatever you're doing in marketing. Your A is your current position. And your B is the ideal outcome. You want to go from A to B. The funny thing with this is it's so ridiculously simple that it's amazing anybody could make a 100-page book out of this whole material, A to B, but he has so much more to say. I'd recommend that you get the book. Um, I contacted Bert's organization to get 10 books for today, and they couldn't get them here quick enough. So um, I know Jerry wanted to was interested in getting a book. You can get them online, but you won't find them on Amazon. You have to go right to Michael Burt's site. And um, with that, no, I'd recommend that you go to Michael Burt's site. All you have to do is Google Michael Burt, coach Michael Burt, and you'll find a lot of his materials there. So A, current position. B is your ideal outcome. I'm hoping you can all see this. I don't think I made a copy of this. But he talks about um, doing a deep dive, and I call it an honesty truth bomb, really looking at what last year has been for you and looking forward to this next year. Didn't make a copy of this screen, but yeah, you can take a picture of it, I guess. So I could ask all of you, what do you think is holding you back from moving from your current position to your ideal position. And it's an exercise that I hope you, you'll do once you leave and go home. Um, this is what Michael Burt points out as the key points to of what are holding people back. So one of them is knowledge. Does anybody feel that they are not competent with knowledge to do this business? Kim, okay. Oshi, mm -hmm. thank you for being honest. Oshi's brand new, by the way, to this <laughs> business. But you know what? Um, I suffer from the same thing. I don't always think I have the knowledge to do the kind of job that I need to do for my clients. I'm always concerned about failing them. Um, even though I've been doing it 30 years, there's there's always something that I worry about. It's always changing. It's changing, yeah. Number two are skills. I don't have the skills to get me from my current position to my ideal desire outcome. But we can get those skills. We can learn those things. And it's never been easier than it is now. It's never been easier to find the skills. It's never been easier to find the knowledge. You know, um, at least one person in this room, me, was here before there was any internet. And it was a little bit difficult. You had to try to find people to, to show you the way. Number three is holding people back from their current position to their ideal outcome is desire and drive. I don't have the drive engine to get things done because maybe my goals aren't strong enough. Anybody feel that? What's wrong? Okay. Hey, Maria? Oh, it's going to the wrong bathroom. Okay, well, if there's an overflow, it'll come right out the bottom of So, yeah, if you hear slush and stuff, yeah, it reminds me of a, reminds me of uh, showing a home one time. This is totally off, but it's kind of an interesting story. I, I had a call from a bank and he said, I, um, Jim, I'd like to use you to list one of my, one of the people in our bank that has a home they need to sell, elderly woman. She's going to be going or she's gone into the nursing home and we need to sell her house quickly. And uh, uh, could you help us? And I said, sure. She said, could you come over? Gave me the address. It was on 6th Street Northeast. Uh, I went to the address and uh, he opened the door. And if you haven't experienced this, you will at some point. So when he opened the door, the smell of cats was so strong that it literally almost blew me over. It was so bad. Plus, I'm allergic to cats.
So my throat immediately closed up. So I was talking like this. So I went in the house. There was cat spray all over the walls. And it was ridiculous. She had like 14 cats. Oh, and so I, I said, well, you know, can I walk? Can I walk through the house? So I walked through the house and he said, Jim, um, come here in the living room. And I said, OK. He said, uh, I want you to stand right there. And there was kind of a spot. And so I went to the spot, put my foot down and it went. Oh, yes. And I said, what the hell is that? And he said, this is where she sat. And her feet are where your foot is. And the cats would surround her and they would just pee all over her and on the carpet. This is so, that's gross. Rude. Weird. That's a rude. That's so weird. I am kind of rude. So probably, ah. yeah, but that can, that might happen to you. So uh, did that affect my desire and drive to stay in the business? Maybe. Um, so if any of you are suffering from a drive engine, it's, it's normal. I've got an arrow next to confidence because my next slide talks about confidence. Confidence is I really don't think or believe I can move from A to B and maybe I don't have the boldness to do so. Anybody feel that? It's probably more about the knowledge. Okay. And with okay. the knowledge, mine, um, every week I'm doing some type of webinar. It's going. Yeah. Um, so I'm. So you get the confidence to do the business. Yes. Yeah. Uh, next one is relationships. You lack the right people, the who's to move from A and B. Yes. Me. I don't know, folks. Okay. So what Michael Burt pushes is what a number of uh, motivational people are pushing. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And you need to make contact with people who you know or who you get to know. Tammy Bonnell calls it her dirty dozen. Um, her dirty dozen is made up of people that she knows that she can call at any time to get an opinion or a thought to be able to air out a concern and get uh, get their thoughts. So Tammy Bonnell, one of the things she pushes, Tammy Bonnell's our CEO of Exit. One of the things she pushes is build your dirty dozen. And so I would recommend that you do that. Um, I went off that and also another uh, coaching recommendation of John Maxwell, who's an author of 62 books. And his is, uh, he has 12 questions to ask 12 people. And two years ago, I just started making calls. I went to the exit site, looked at who were the performers, um, who were the regional owners that I had a lot of uh, respect for. And I just called them. And I said, I'm reaching out to you. I would hope you will be one of my dirty dozen. And they all responded positively. So don't think that you can't call people to ask them. I've called Tammy Bonnell. I've called Annette Anthony. I've, I've called people that I needed. So don't let that hold you back. So we see confidence is there. We really don't think we have the boldness that we need. This fact is so important. Um, let me go the right direction. That in the Pacific Northwest or the Pacific West region of exit, um, the regional owner, Rick DeLuca, is building the company. He owns six states in the Pacific West. He's building his whole organization over the word confidence. So much so that his PR person, his marketing person, does constant reminders of how confidence is valuable, how confidence will look good on you, how confidence is the right direction to choose. Confidence, are you hanging on by a thread? And his promise to people is, I'll help you with the confidence, because in his particular opinion, he believes that that is the number one thing real, real estate agents are lacking, is confidence. So I'm going to point to, to another book for just a second, because Michael Burt points to it in his book. And it's a book called Drive by Daniel Pink. And Daniel Pink talks about um, reasons that people get into the real estate business. So this totally fits me and maybe it'll fit you. When I got into the real estate business in 1992, it was because I wanted autonomy. 
I wanted to have the ability to do what I wanted, how I wanted, and when I wanted. I couldn't get that by owning retail businesses. I was a slave to the retail business. I couldn't do that from the photo lab that I owned. I was a slave to the photo lab, but I had total autonomy when I got into real estate and I got exactly what I was looking for. Any of the rest of you, is that did that appeal to you about real estate? Is that you could be your own boss? Mm -hmm. And while you're having, hopefully, wherever, if you're with different companies, you have direction on how to do the business, but no one's telling you exactly how you got to do it. You have to do this. You have autonomy. Second one was purpose. So I wanted to be able to utilize whatever talents that I had, as I'm guessing the talents that you have to help others and to exchange between talent and solving a problem. See, that's what we do. We're problem solvers. We need to think of ourselves as problem solvers. And we get paid a crazy amount of money to solve problems. We find the problem and we find um, the solution. That's called exchange. Money is exchange. Third thing is progress. You love knowing that you're moving forward on something. I mean, how exciting is it when you close a transaction? You know you're moving forward. How exciting is it when you have a new client? When you're, you know, having people call you that you never expected calling you. Kim experiences it all the time with referrals. People that know her caller. Someone called me last night with a referral from Virginia. Is that before you had done some heavy drinking last night, or? <laughs> or... That was before they did. So they called you from where? Oh, she. They're um, agent in Virginia. And so why did they it call you? Because I'm on the answer referral page. Okay. Something so simple, but and. And I introduced myself, put a picture, call me. Okay. I'm also in the Dallas area. So did you talk to her? Did you? Yeah. yeah. They're so. They're flying in tomorrow. Nice. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Okay. They're so, looking in Fort Worth or Houston, so it's a okay. And you know the Houston, you know the Houston area. I do not. Okay. So yes. Okay. <laughs> so everybody just helps each other yeah. to do that. All right. Good. So what is that called? What is that page called? So if people aren't on it, what is the exact name? Yeah. Where do, do they go on the exit website? Where do you go it's to find on it? Facebook. It's all the referrals. Well, there's two too. Two two. Two two. Two two. Two two. I spell right. I'll get it. Okay. Go ahead and look that up. I see exit realty referral group. Okay. And you don't have to be in a referral group just for exit. You know, one of the things that exit realty referral group in A. Okay. I'll put it, let's put it on the page. Okay. Um, one of the things just bothers me so much is when I see Facebook posts, but there's people in here that have benefited from it, where somebody says, I'm looking for an agent in blank on their Facebook posts, rather than them doing the work to find mm -hmm. the most competent agent that they could. They're just kind of throwing it out there. Could somebody give me a name? Are you the person? I know, Kim, you've probably seen, I've mentioned you a lot of times when I see them and other people in the office, you know, call, call this person. Okay. You have the sheet, I believe in your, in your book, in, in your pr presentation, Michael Burke calls things your because goals. Now you all know Simon Sinek. You probably heard that name um, to discover your why he wrote the book. I don't know, 10 years ago, made him world famous. I think he actually did um, a Ted talk. I don't know if any of you watched TED Talks, but he did a TED Talk. It made him world famous. And so he's written more books. He's a very bright guy. He calls it your why, discovering your why, finding out what is your why. For Michael Burke, he calls it your because goals. So I wrote down mine. I told you I would get personal not to brag or anything, but these are mine, just so you have an idea. Um, the reasons I do this or have done this for the last 20 years is because my father raised me to show up and deliver something that I take pride in. Um, and so that's what I try to do. Uh, when I'm with customers, just my preference 
I always, I'm always dressed because my father told me, you got to dress. He told me when people come into our music store to buy a $2,000 piano, this is back in 1980, to buy a $2,000 piano, the very least you can give them is a suit when they walk in rather than jeans and a t-shirt. So that's just how I was raised. Um, it's because I believe in leaving something better than when I found it, which I try to do as much as I can with people that I know. Because I work to be knowledgeable, I read, I study, and I look to my mentors for help. Because I believe there is nothing more important in my life than God and family. It's just me. <clears throat> because I have seen how my ability has helped people sell and buy real estate. And one of my because goals is because I have seen the proof of the power of residual income. There's so much power in residual income. And in his book, although I'm not going to cover that, he talks about how important residual income is for building your future. And of course, with exit, you can do that. Okay, so from a personal note, my perp I have two purpose statements. And do any of you have purpose statements? I know we've talked about this before, but consider, um, it, some people call it a mission statement. Some people call it a purpose statement. Um, and Bob McKinnon, sorry, he's not here. He calls it my just cause. Why, why do I do what I do? So this is one of mine that I had, and you'll see that the date of it is March of 2006. That's when I wrote this. When I opened my office in Bend, my goal was to coach, train, and provide leadership that inspires, creates trust, and embraces a positive mindset that changes lives of those around me. That was my purpose statement. And I tried to live to that. And I have a second, a second one. Um, and I'm not pushing a book, I, whatever. Um, in 19... I can't even remember what year I wrote this book and I wrote it because I wanted to read it, but no one else had written it. I wanted to read what was inside, but no one else had written it. And so I have a particular um, place in my heart for kids that have gotten in trouble, dropped out of school and need help because there's a lot of them and there's more now than there's ever been before since COVID. So here's, my goal with this. Through my book and my presentations, I hope that I might inspire positive change and be the brightest light for young people and their parents in helping them to dream, believe, and achieve and reclaim their lives for a better future. When I wrote the book and when I sent this to uh, someone that had asked me from the National Guard Youth Challenge Foundation, um, because I did this and because of the belief, I wasn't looking to get something out of it necessarily other than to help people, but I was given a position on the national board of the National Guard Youth Challenge Foundation, which has allowed me to do some things with this, to put this in the hands of parents who have a, a youth between 15 and 18 that's in trouble and they don't know what to do. And so this book talks about my experience with my son and how it helped us and change the life of our family, completely change the life of our family. Okay, so the foundation of your real estate business is that money changes hands when problems are solved. And again, that's called exchange. Think of it as exchange. Okay, so when we talk about A to B, here's the most simple, basic example of A to B. You work with a buyer that purchases a house, that's your A. You might want to work with buyers. That's your life mission. And B is you want to get paid. Now, your B could be you want to help them find their first home or you want to help them get the loan. Your B can be a number of things, but you want to work. Think of your business instead of writing goals the normal way, writing your goals in an A, a to B fashion. So today is about clarity. This whole book talks about clarity. And so I'm hoping that you get some clarity with what to do for next year by hearing what, what I'm saying and by picking up the book. It's 10 bucks. 
It's, it's almost nothing. So clarity is a state of having a full, detailed, and orderly mental grasp of something. That's clarity. How many of you feel you really have clarity in your business? No? I get it. I, I get it. There's times where I think I have total clarity. And there's other times it's like, what, what am I doing? Where am I at? So we're striving for clarity. And it happens to be the most common need of real estate agents because many agents are just all over the place. They don't know exactly what they're doing from one minute to the next. And they're usually doing the thing that they have to do that day, not what they plan to do that day. So it appears that most real estate agents operate in confusion. Is that you? It's me. Randomness in motion and aren't clear what their next move needs to be. For 2024, one of the things that he recommends in the book is that you think what your next big move is going to be. So limiting beliefs. So at your core, do you believe that when you set a dominant aspiration, dream or ambition, that it's possible for you to reach that goal? Or do you believe it's only for others? Oh, see, apparently you don't believe it's only for others. You set your goal for 25 transactions. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't. How about other people? Anybody feel that they have limiting beliefs that are holding them back? Anyone? No? I bet you do. I bet you do. <clears throat> so here's a study, and I can't give you where it came from, but, uh, but the study shows that 87% of people live their entire life and never find their purpose and their clarity. Have any of you heard about what usually happens when people are able to talk and they're dying? They're on their deathbed. They might be in the hospital. They might be talking to their loved ones as they're just about ready to die. And a lot of times when people die, they know they're going to die. I've been around several people. And uh, when I was with my parents, both of them knew it was imminent. It was about to happen. And so that's usually when the truth comes out. So any guesses as what people sometimes will say as they're dying? They're not ready. Okay. I regret, I'm scared. They didn't achieve what they did. All those things. If I only would have, I wish I would have, I should have. Every, everyone, we go through all of that looking back. So by getting clarity, by looking at this, we know that that's probably going to be one of the last things we think before we die. So why let it happen? Why not try to find your purpose and try to find your clarity? And I know I don't know what it is. It may not even be in real estate. It might be something completely different. So here's some clarity issues. Don't know if you guys can see this screen or not. Um, so some major clarity issues is having clarity over what you do next, your next move. Clarity towards your bigger future versus staying where you're at. Hey, it's really easy to stay where we're at, to do the same thing over and over again. It's not getting us to where we want to be if we even know where we want to be. But no, having clarity towards a bigger future. Clarity over your finances with a goal to have passive income greater than your living expenses. Mm -hmm. Clarity over anxiety. You know, going back to, to that with the passive income and thinking back um, at Michael Burt's presentation on March 14th at the uh, exit event in Orlando, one of the questions that Annette Anthony asked from the stage um, is how many people have passive income because they sponsored into exit? which by the way, we have the power to do at our company. We can sponsor, bring people in and share the wealth of their income. It doesn't take away from their income, but it benefits us because our corporation will reward us for building our company. So with passive income. So Annette Anthony asked the question, how many people have earned $10,000 
with passive income with sponsoring people. Do you, you may not remember, do you remember the question? Um, do you remember how many hands went up? Do, do you, I mean, I remember because I was totally full. Not as many. No, how many people were in the room? I don't even remember. 800, 500, something like that. A lot of people. And so, you know, there were maybe, I don't know, 15 hands that went up, maybe, because I, you know, looked around. I always sit in front because I can't hear. So I was in front. So I, you know, was kind of looking around. I thought, well, that's strange. And she kept going up and up. And the higher that she went, either there were few hands or no hands. And I think that's so sad for our company, for your company to be able to do that. Some of you have seen the little billboard thing that I do with the residual income I've earned. And I'm not saying this to brag, but of the importance of it. Does anybody know my number? Because we're going to talk about my- It was 37, almost four. It's 404. So over 16 years, the residual income I've earned by doing nothing except introducing people to our company has been $404,000. Don't ask me where it's at, but it helped. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't write you a check today. Yeah, I am not a sugar daddy. Uh, it's gone. My kids pretty much ate that up by going to expensive schools. And I found plenty of ways to blow it myself. But we have the opportunity for what Michael Burt talks about. And this isn't written for exit, but with passive income should be our goal, whatever that might be. Um, some other major clarity issues is clarity over anxiety, clarity over your talents. You know, what problems do you solve and what's your primary skill? Mike, what do you think your primary skill is? When you're working with clients, what's your skill? What makes you who you are? What makes you special? They seem to be comfortable with me. Okay. You put people to ease. Yeah, they tend to trust me. Sometimes too much. Okay. Not not in a bad way, like I'm gonna rip them off or anything too much as in um Do they take advantage of you? No not really. It's probably more of a um if I'm giving somebody information, you know, so that they can make the right decision on you know, say an offer amount or how much to list their house, they will, they're so trusting, like, what you tell me how much to okay. offer, and you tell me to, I'm like, no, I'm giving you the information so you can make a decision you're comfortable with. Okay. And, and, you know, even people that I don't even live in New Mexico anymore, and they're like, hey, um, I know you referred me to so-and-so, but can you look at this and just to make sure that it's, mm -hmm. so that it, it's built a lot of rapport. It's gotten a lot of rapport. They're comfortable with you. They trust you. Yeah. That's all even, we got. Even people that when I was going back and forth, I, I made it very clear, like, you know, I don't live here. I'm here like once a month. Um, so I want to make sure you understand that so that you're, you know, aware of the situation. Somebody will be helping me like, no, we want you to handle this. And that's just it. So. Good. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Tom, what, what do you think that your your primary skill is. Do you even know? No, I think I do. What is but, it? But, do you uh, mind sharing what your what do you think it is? I mean, I'm talking bragging about me, but but you know, it's somewhat similar to what Michael just said. But you know, if you can get the, the individuals, I've had the same in situation where you're you're that too much stuff is like, hey, look, I haven't been doing this this long. It's your decision to make. This is this is this is the facts. Mm -hmm. of what the houses are going for similar here. But uh, sounds like I'm drawn on my because as I'm sitting here thinking, this is the task I'll do in private and maybe chit chat with somebody who I want to bounce things off of. Mm -hmm. But I've never been one to slay myself and open in front of them. I got it. I got it. Kim, how about you? What's your primary skill? What makes you special to your clients, do you think? Because I enjoy doing the discovery questions, but not reading a script. Okay. And they sense that. They know that you're not scripted. So I don't go in there with my, I have my listening presentation, if you call it, or a buyer rep or whatever. But you, I go in there and it's, it's about them. What do you need? What do you want? How do yeah. you feel if this happens? You know, where do you see yourself kind of thing? And then we talk about it. Yeah. See, my for me, my, my presentation that I've always given is a, a crutch for me. It really isn't to tell them everything. It's a crutch so I can remember 
to talk to them about the things I can do to help them. Not So I have it there, but I'm looking at them. They're not looking at my computer or my papers. Well, the other day when I went into the listing presentation, it was a referral from a, a mom for her daughter. And we went in there and they had it. And you know, I kind of looked around or whatever and the table's over here and the couch is over here. And she moved towards the couch. So we sat on the couch for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I didn't open anything up. We talked. I asked her a few questions like I had said. And then I was going to, then it was become, you know, she goes, okay, we can go sit at the table now. But it was her comfort before business. Yeah. So Very cool. Okay. So you need to discover your skill, your primary skill. Any else, Anybody else want to share what they think their skill is? What's your song? Oh. Um, I think my special skill is education based on knowledge and experience. I've okay. with a lot of military, and I have a military spouse who has done this over and over and over. Been there, done that. 15 years. Yes. So when I deal with military, they know I understand. They absolutely know because I've done it and I've done it with the family. I've done it, you know, just me and him. So like most of my business is military. That's your skill, primary skill. So do you prefer to work with military people that are, have been in military with? No, it <laughs> I prefer to help them because I know, I know what they're going through, exactly mm -hmm. what it is to PCS, exactly what it is. Um, many have done the exact same move I did from California here. Yeah. So being able to tell them or when they go to like school in Arizona, I can tell them, hey, just so you know, that place floods. So when you leave, you know, there's rain, take everything off the floor. It's happened to my husband twice. Yeah. You know, to share experiences and things that we've actually been through as a military family to help guide and educate those who have come after us. Very cool. Very cool. So the other is clarity over your happiness. A lot of us uh, think it's too selfish to think about happiness, but it isn't. Um, at an exit convention three years ago, there was a speaker, I don't know if he was there when you were there, that talked about happiness and how to be happy, because it's so important. Okay, so let's talk about your clarity issues. So I want you to think about where you are, what you don't like about where you're at, and where you would like to go. So keep in mind, the goal is to operate in a highly, this is a goal, should be the goal for all of us, enjoyable and impactful and highly should be profitable way rather than profile way, profitable way. Okay, so you can do this exercise on your own. Think about where you are, what you don't like about where you are and where you would like to go. where you are, what you don't like about where you are, and where you would like to go. That's a pretty basic goal setting exercise. Okay, and I think I have this sheet in your book in, or in the handout that I gave you. So these are things for you to look at as you're looking towards next year and looking at your life. So examine the things that you're obligated to, that your heart's not involved in, that you can cut away. How many things are you doing that are just a total waste? How many times do you need to say no instead of saying yes all the time? Can that be to your husband? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We did get in there last night, so I don't know about that, Kim. No. Ask Mike about that because there, no, um, he's the husband or Harry, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you had to pick a target to drive toward in business right now, what would it be? What would your target be? What are your biggest time wasters? What are three main objectives you're trying to do in business and in your life? Where do I get the best return on my energy that fuels me? Versus drains me. What are the three best investments I've ever made that return five times or more to me? And why haven't I gone back there to get more? What's one of the best investments, Kim, you've made? That's not about money. That's not about money? Mm -hmm. My networking. I mean... Networking is one of her best investments. I mean, you can see that from a mile away. How about the rest of you? What kind of... Best investments have you made? 
this was the best invest, uh, investment that I made. You know, it took me a long time to do this because I'm not a writer. Um, barely got through college, but that was one for me. Anyone else? Okay. Who's written you the biggest checks in your lifetime as customers, clients, or strategic partners? And why haven't you gone back there? So do you stay in touch with those people that have helped benefit you? And the biggest check doesn't mean money necessarily. It could be whatever it might be. Okay, so if you want to know whether you're in the right business and you're doing the right thing, here's four questions that, that Michael Burt suggests you ask yourself. What do you love doing? That's your passion. What are you great at? Did I print this sheet out? Yes. Okay. I don't know if all of you got it. The printer was jammed up and having all kinds of issues. Um, in there anywhere? No. Yeah. Oh, I just saw it. I thought I saw it. I mean, oh. So what do you love doing? That's your passion. What are you great at? That's your talent. Where do you see a problem or a need in the real estate agent, real estate industry? And that's opportunity. There's so many opportunities. We're going to talk about a few in a minute. And what is your conscience telling you that you need to do or should start doing? And that's your realization. Four things for planning for next year. What are you passionate about? You know, if you're not passionate about working with buyers, then don't work with buyers. Figure out how you can work with sellers. If you're passionate about people that have gone through a divorce, because maybe you've gone one through one, maybe that's your passion. If you want to work with people who've been in or are in the military, and that's your passion, Jerry, those are the people you might want to focus on. If you want to help people that might be in the airline industry, because they're like you, maybe those are the people you want to work with. So removing any confusion of priority. This is part one. So what are your goals in order to set you, set your A to B? So in order to set your A to B, look at these things so you don't waste your time. Michael Burt's suggestion, not mine. Return on your investment, your time, your energy, and your money. Is it wise? What you're doing, are you confused? Is it something you shouldn't be doing? Should you have said no to it? Your return on investment. What's your objective and what action do you need to take to accomplish the goal? And three, the return on energy. So what's the emotional tax? Will it bring you joy? Do you have a personal, you have the personal energy to meet a commitment and make it not an obligation? So when you're committed, your heart is involved. If it, and if it's not, I feel sorry for you. If it's only about the money, if it's only about the deal, I hate the word deal, but that's the word of our profession. I hate it. But if that's all that it's all about, I'm sorry. It's too bad. It's hard to have a lot of joy when it's not about giving somebody their keys and watching them cry or thank you or to hug you or whatever it might be. Okay, so here's a sample of A to B, the most basic A to B kind of thing that I put out. So how do I get a return on investment? So the question is, that's your A, how do I get a return on my investment? So your investment, uh, you're about to reinvest. You haven't already in paying dues to the National Association of Realtors in 2024. What is that, $505 or something? That's an investment. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. So how do you get a return on that investment? That's only a money investment. That's not time. That's not energy. That's just money. What's your objective? What is it you're trying to do anyhow? Is it just to come here on Thursdays for the social part of it and to get lunch? What's the objective? What do I need to do to experience joy? <laughs> Eat lunch. That's a long drive for this lunch. It is a long drive. 
And you got to ask yourself, do I have the commitment to be doing this in 2024? Sure do. Okay. When you use your knowledge, skills, drive, and confidence to solve the right problem, you can earn a lot of money and help a lot of people. We're problem solvers. That's all we are. We didn't, we weren't a few years ago. We really went away from that. We were order takers because we didn't have to do anything to sell a house. I, Mike, you were doing business then, Jerry, maybe, maybe you gals, but you know, you just had to show up to unlock a door and write an offer. You didn't have to take care of hardly any problems other than inspections. It was pretty easy. Now, you have to solve the right problems. There's a lot more problems. Is there a little bit more of a problem with financing now than there was a few years ago? Yeah, is it more of a problem finding affordable homes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an issue. That's a problem. You're going to have to deal with the inspections because they've been yeah. waving them. Yeah, as is. And, you know, I have one right now that's as is, but they just, just in case, you know, it's as is, but they said, just in case, can we have somebody come over? But they won't have anybody come over. They just want it. Okay, so let's use your, your A to B formula to find your magic number. So here's the example that Michael Burt uses, and you can use maybe two. $100,000 seems to be the number people pick to how much they want to make in a real estate business. It's been that way for years. When people would come to me and say, we're thinking about getting a real estate license or we're thinking about coming to your company, uh, my questions, two questions, <clears throat> how much do you need to make from doing this business and how much do you want to make? It was almost every single time people said, I need to make $40,000 a year. That would cover their car payment, house payment. This is you know eight years ago. It would cover all that stuff. Um, how much do you want to make? If we could help you, Make what you want to make. Hundred thousand dollars is a number. Now that could be your number. Maybe your number is higher. Oh, she. Minus the only reason why I chose that is because of my income for the last ten years. It's always been six figures. So okay. you got to do what I take to okay. get there. Yeah. Well, your your six figure number is kind of like other people's forty thousand dollar number because that's what you're used to. Yeah. And a lot of people that come into the business come in and they go, listen. Um, you know, I might have made 60000 I might have made, but I just need to make sure that I cover my house payment, be able to feed my family. That's hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is on $100,000 uh, income. So he broke it down like this. I've never broken it down. That I, you, I broke mine down. Did you? $25,000 a quarter, $8,250 monthly. 91 days and a quarter, $274.73 per day. That's breaking it down. Breaking it down like that reminds me when you call on the blinds to get your psychic read. <laughs> that's how much it costs to read it now you're trying to read you. Maybe that's where Michael Burt got oh, this. I've never called it. I haven't even oh, called it. Like, you know, you, okay, you called the other one that was psychic. Mm. Oh, oh. <laughs> There we go. Um, that's the one I was thinking of. Right now. <laughs> now, now we know Mike's B. He wants to get from A to B. Mike. <laughs> Definitely. Mike's going to help me get to the number. number. One thing I know for sure, he didn't get to B last night when he went home after the party. Uh -oh. Uh oh. All right. So, um, so you might break it down like this. When I look at this, you know, $8,250, what does that mean usually here in, in North Texas? How many? 8000 a month? Yeah. What would that take? A closing. One closing. A closing. One closing. So that might be your goal. I want it. My B is to close one transaction a month. When I started in the business, that's what I wanted to do. I, need, I knew I needed to close one transaction a month to be able to make what I needed to make that $40,000 thing, mm -hmm. that's what I needed to make. So Unfortunately, that's where I'm at, where you're at right here. Okay. That's how I visualize That's how you look I at it. I know it's my first year, and, and you got to shoot for the stars to fall of course. off the bed. Yeah. So that's my mindset. Yeah. That's literally uh, closing a $350,000 home. Yes. This is effort at our 
thing. Yeah, it might be average for where you're at. It may not be. It's not average for adopts and ranch, is it? It's no. Not no. You're 500, 600. So oh, okay. I'm just thinking about like metropolitan. Uh huh. Dallas. Yeah. That's yeah. like the average home. Price. Yeah. I think McKinney right now, the, the median is 550. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The median is five. Sense. And it's different. I mean, everywhere. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> so think of it this way. Okay. I wasn't in the contract for 185 last night. <laughs> oh, we were talking about that at the pub by you. Yeah. Yep. He met in a contract last night. He met in a second. I'll take a, yeah. a 90,000. Anything. No, girl. There's anything I sold with 70,000. Oh, I'll take it. I don't pay dollars. This. So, how do you get to that $8,200 a month if that happens to be your number? And it may not be your number, but how do you get there? Well, there's there's numbers a number of ways to get there, and this is just some examples that I pulled down on ways that you can get uh, be successful in the real estate business. We won't go through. We're going to go through one, just one of these, so you can kind of see how it's broken down or how one person broke it down that I just love. It's not even me. So if your uh, A is to do. 12 transactions a year, your B could be, I'm going to knock doors. Now, while Michael Burt doesn't go to C or D, Bob McKinnon was asking me this last night. He said, well, what happens when you get to B? Is there a C? Is there a D? Michael Burt doesn't lay that out. But if, you're, if you know that you're going to do something to get to your B, you're going to knock doors to get to your B of 12 transactions. Then you break it down from there. So think of it that way. So these are all the different ways. And there's more than this. I don't know that it has work uh, short sales. It's not on there. I don't know if foreclosures is on there. Um, work with divorces, work probate. I mean, there's so many things we can do in this business. Michael Burt says be a specialist, not a generalist. I've pretty much been a generalist for a, a long time, but he recommends you be a specialist and be the very best at what you can be at something. What do they say? It takes 10,000 hours of, of knowledge on a subject to be an expert. Mm -hmm. Whatever that might be, find your specialization if you choose to do that. Some people like the ability in real estate to do a FISBO two days a week, to work FISBOs, to get on the phone two days a week, to role play one day a week, whatever it might be. So these are just some examples. Okay. So I want you, you to do this exercise very quickly. I don't want to keep you here too long. Okay, if you were going to, if you were going to build a geographic farm, an area that you're working, that you're going to specialize in, just to identify it, to make sure everybody knows, geographic farm is an area that you claim is your own. It can be 300 homes. It can be 2,000 homes. It's entirely up to you. Generally, it's a neighborhood. Generally, it's a subdivision that you specialize in and you become the, the go-to person for that area. So I want you just, we'll just take five minutes because I don't want to keep you here. So we know that the A is you want to have a geographic farm, okay? You're going to do this in 2024. Okay, Tom, you're going to do this in 2024. Okay, you're gonna build a geographic farm. Yes. So one thing I learned with Andrea from First American Title, it was amazing that night um, website that she invited me to it, and I've been ordering postcard cards, label tags to put on our exit folders. But anyway, to get to geographic farming on that website, you can narrow it down to like a street, like two okay. streets, and also you can even buy leads from there for five cents. Okay. And they mail. I know you don't like that one, but okay. So you've got the sheet in front of you that I did the A to B yes. sheet. Okay, I want you to write things like that down. Okay. So you're going to partner with mm -hmm. McKnight Title. It was right. First American. First American. But I haven't. Doesn't matter. Have to show everyone. I'm going to partner okay. with First American, or I'm going to partner. Who was the the lender that was in our thing last night from Low Depot. Right. That's Chris. Chris. Um, I'm going to partner with Chris. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out to Chris and I'm going to ask him to help me build my geographic farm. Okay. Okay. What other things can you do to build a geographic farm? I got to sit down. I hope you guys don't. Mind. No, we, no, we don't. We wanted you to sit. 
know, but these chairs, slides, so I'm afraid they're going to go out from under oh, me. Oh, fine. Which would be no. highly entertaining, but I usually rip my pants off when I do that. What other things? What other things do Your you Your favorite do? thing to hear is knock doors. <laughs> okay, well, so put knock doors. That's what I did. I went door to door, 232 homes that were in my subdivision, which was, and I can't even remember the name of it. That's terrible. You know that we did a field trip with Jim to knock doors, right? You felt mm -hmm. me. But this I'm is a geographic farm. I'm talking in the garage. I didn't do it. Okay, so that's a little different because this is your geographic farm. This is right. because these people aren't going to be total strangers that you just show up at the door mm -hmm. and smile and you know say good morning. I'm so and so from Exit Realty. When are you planning to move? I mean, that's one thing that you can do. But in a geographic farm, it might be different. You might knock the door the first time. Hi, I'm Oshi. I'm from Exit Realty. I'm the expert in this neighborhood. I'm a realtor in your neighborhood. I want to help you be the most informed seller and or buyer that you can possibly be if you ever get to that point. I do think if you're going to geographically work your area, you need to get involved in your community. Okay, get involved in the community. And if you're not involved, at least give them the information what's going on in their community. Okay. The title can help you with yep. that kind of thing. Your HOA can. Okay. Yes. HOA. Okay. I like that part. Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a girl who killed it by just doing HOA events. Really? Mm -hmm. She's like the go to in her neighborhood. She and then she moved. Which <laughs> one <laughs> I'm going? Yeah. Yeah. Show, up, show up, you know, because Bob and I was, you know, we were talking about the hyper, you know, the hyper local thing. Mm -hmm. Go to your schools, mm -hmm. go to the Chamber of Commerce, go to your businesses. Promote your businesses in your newsletters, mm -hmm. things like that. Do any of you have uh, elementary schools kids? No, nobody. Like junior high. Mine said mine stay at home. Oh, oh. home school. <laughs> I have great kids, kids too. We did um, like teacher uh, where only the teachers are there and the kids are not there. We would show up with a coffee truck and teachers. Like I know a girl. I know a girl who's gotten tons of business from the teachers from just doing that in her elementary school. You know what we did. When my kids were in school, was they did a fundraising 5K every year, and so we, me and my wife, sponsored it. Okay. So we provided all the, um, like water and stuff for the runners during the 5K. We, you know, paid for certain things, and then we found sponsors to do giveaways. Okay, and but, for in the benefit of the school. Yeah, it was it okay. was a fundraiser for the school. It was a five k, and so we just like my wife was part of the PTA. Okay, thing, so. so participation with the school. Yeah. Okay, that you, can make you, you can uh, sponsor events, mm -hmm. do cool stuff like that. Yeah, and and be very careful in sponsoring sports teams that can be very expensive yeah. and get you very little. So you need mm -hmm. to think about how you're going to spend your money with schools. We also did like when they had um, events in town, like, you know, say we have, you know, the stuff here at Grapevine, we would provide um, junkies for the kids. So they didn't, parents didn't have to pay for them. It, okay. it would cost like, oh, I want to say, I, I had a lady, she gave us a deal, but for like a whole event um, for a full day, I want to say it would be like, Seven hundred bucks okay. for two so, numbers, yeah. That's marketing. That's yeah. a piece of marketing, right? Is your investment. However, you're going to do your geographic farm. You have to decide how much do I have, what do I want to get from it, what do I expect to get from it. What other things can you do? So one thing I want to ask you, um, yeah. like you know, when I moved here a year and a half ago, I have a two-year lease at Tenise Apartments mm -hmm. that I was telling you about. Like, it's kind of awkward to farm, like, me just randomly <laughs> and just say, hey, I'm your local realtor, I, you know. I don't why? why? That's why I was wondering, like, how would I... In your apartment public? No, no like, no. I'm a nearby okay. subdivision. Like, it feels I wouldn't know enough, and I, I wouldn't be... Well, you... So... Um, you could do it differently. So I haven't think about the other side of it. What do you like about it? Okay. You know? Yeah. You start right. the conversation. <laughs> You can run comps in that neighborhood and get on their Facebook page. Most neighborhoods have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. It says selling, the house is sold, average sale price, mm -hmm. how many days. 
It looks, you can look at my Facebook. Yes. I got that from Autumn. Oh, okay. Because that's what she did on her Facebook page. Okay. okay. So there's ways to learn, yeah. to learn about the neighborhood. Sometimes just talking to people that are in the neighborhood or looking on a Facebook page. You want to know the neighborhood. You don't want right. to be just bold. randomly. You don't want to be fake. Yeah. You but you can say, you know, mm -hmm. that I, um, I work several different neighborhoods in DFW. And I chose in your neighborhood because I want to live here. Yeah, I and my really want to live here. My aunt's a um, HOA president in uh -huh. some nice neighborhood in Cedar or something. Thank you. But I was okay. thinking about it, but I didn't know like how that would work. She's just so she's different. So we'll see. The, <laughs> the, the, the Facebook pages are amazing because I yeah, the um, in North Fort Worth, the mm -hmm. heritage area, the. The initiation to that HOA for heritage is twelve hundred bucks, so you have to pay that at closing. And so, I I was representing a buyer there, and their seller, the selling agent, had no idea that it was twelve hundred bucks to get into the HOA. But I knew from the Facebook page, and then I looked into it. So when we wrote our offer, I had two hundred fifty bucks was all that my buyer was responsible for at. <laughs> and then my the buyer kind of freaked out because we got all the HOA docs and he's like, Oh, hundred bucks, you told me two fifty. I said, Yeah, I covered you two fifty, but it's only two fifty in the contract. And then the That's a win. the listing agent was like saying, Hey, my client didn't know it was twelve hundred bucks. Like, sorry, buddy. It was the contract. Like, yeah, what does the contract say? Yeah, but and, and plus, you know, because they did, I, I know what they, it comes. They waited last minute to order stuff, and so she had to rush. So it was like seven hundred bucks to get in the document, and then she paid the twelve fifty for the for the twelve hundred mm -hmm. initiation. Oh, I need copy my title company. Jim, why didn't you help me? Really you know, it's like no, well, the title company. Fine, Maria. Title company knew. <laughs> <laughs> So you really got to go? Yeah, my little one has a one. Everybody say goodbye. Maria, thank, you for, thank you for coming. Yeah, I got to go far. Thanks for being here. <laughs> I got to go get some parents. Okay, so. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. So one of the things you can do if you don't know how to, how to start a geographic farm is find out from people who do geographic farming. So I re I reached out to this person, or I found this person of the Sakela group, Shelly Sakela, and she has a plan through Tom Ferry. So Tom Ferry does these all the time. We've done playbooks here. I've done a couple of them here. So I looked into Tom Ferry. I put geo farming, geographic farming, and here's what I got. So this is about her. And it's a whole plan, but here's what she does. So you don't know what to do. It's already built for you. Did I provide you, you this sheet? This yeah. Yes. Yay. Thank you. That was a lot of writing. Yes. <laughs> Is it there? Who doesn't have it? Everybody have it? Okay. So you really got ripped off. It's not Oh, there it is. Okay. You didn't get ripped off. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is what she does. So why try to reinvent? Yeah. Yeah. Why why reinvent it? This is all available to us. So this is her B. She wanted to have a farm. If we go back, you can see that you know her results in 2021. She closed 82 transactions, 45 million dollars in business. And then in 2022, 33 transactions up to July, half of the year. But take a look at this. I mean, it doesn't come easy. Yeah. And there's expense built into this thing. So she's making a lot of money. But if she's doing community events, if she's doing um, theme days, you know, in, in my farm, you know, I did an ice cream social in the summertime and, you know, did a deal. I knocked all the doors, sent invitations, invited all the people to come, had an ice cream company come and did an ice cream. That was like 700 bucks. 
to do that. So that was my investment. So people would know that, you know, the fat guy in a suit was the one buying the ice cream for the kids. Okay. Okay. So here's, here is the plan. Here's the B. You want to do a geographic farm? There's the B. You want to knock doors? You'll find the B. It's out there. You want to do anything? That's the B. It's there. All you need is the A to the B. You don't need all kinds of stuff. Now, once you get to the B, you have to figure out, okay, how am I going to pay for it? Am I willing to do this? And is it too much time? How many months do you put into it? And if you're doing a geographic farm, if you don't give it a year, it will fail. So don't do it for three or four months and then quit. Yeah. <clears throat> I had agents in my company. One agent who left the company, she came into my office. I always did an exit interview. Why are you leaving? Is there anything I could have done? How could I have done better? And she said, well, you know, one of the things you told me, it didn't work. And I, I put a lot of effort into it. I said, well, what was it? She said it was geographic farming. I said, it didn't work. She said, it didn't work. I said, what neighborhood did you do? She said, Providence. Go, Gosh, I can't believe it didn't work. I said, so um, you've been here for eight months. So you, you've done something every month? Uh, no, I, I just did it the first month. And no buyers came. Mm -hmm. No sellers came. That's the problem. This is a long-term deal. It's, it's unlikely that you're going to get, you know, somebody the first time. Can you teach us the one-month deal? The what? Can you teach us the one-month deal? <laughs> okay, you are excused. Uh, all right. Yeah, yeah. It's all because of that bee last night. I mean, it's ornier than hell today. I got to give your wife a call and tell her what she's saying. Okay, so here's some things to look at as you're going into 2024. Figure out what your primary skill set is. What are you really good at? I recognize a skill set when I recognized that I was really good at negotiating when I got involved in negotiating transactions and talking to other agents. I utilize the skill to solve this problem. I utilize the negotiation to be able to get deals close because I work really closely with the other agent in a very professional and kind way, a very complimentary way, which is kind of uncommon in our business. These are the people who would compensate me at the highest level that I would really enjoy working with. And they would enjoy my skill set. Okay, so the final thoughts that I have, this is printed so we don't have to go through them. But I'll just read it really, really quick. Things to think about. Get out of frustration and chronic unhappiness and into joy. Try to figure out how you can have joy in a business. You can be successful in a healthy and positive manner, getting better every day. Take seven minutes daily to structure your A to B. I know some of you do not write out daily or weekly goals. I know you don't. Do it daily. Kim does hers on Sunday night, or I recommend to Kim to do them Sunday night. Write them out for the week. What are you going to do this week? What does it look like? Use the A, B structure to build on every aspect of your business. Just try it. Just try the A to B. Here's what I here's what I have to get done this week. I want to be able to sell a home. This is what it's going to take. I'm going to need to knock. I don't want to do it, but I need to knock a hundred doors. I need to make God. I need to make fifty calls. I don't want to make fifty, but I got to. You know, the the numbers one hundred and fifty equals one deal. One hundred and fifty calls. Okay, and the others that you can read, so forth. So maybe it's time to reset what you've been doing to what you're going to do next year. You got to reset your dreams. What is it that you want to do? You got to reset your ambitions. You have to reset your purpose. What is your purpose anyhow? Why are you doing this? You have to reset your commitments. And you have to reset your business. And Jim, what I like about today, it's more like everybody want to write your goals down, write the numbers, get this. It's more about being mentally there. We are basically resetting our mentality going into next year with clarity, right? Yes. And then also getting our head in the game. Mindset. Yeah. So I think this is way more important before you get to the money part. I do too. Yes. You know, when I talked to Bob a few months ago, and 
he said, so what are you going to do this year that, you know, with, with the goals, with the agents in the office? And I said, well, you know, I, last year didn't really go so well, in my opinion, with, you know, the setting of goals. Um, just know most of the agents in our office didn't even bother to set any or to send me any of their numbers. Uh, and I know they didn't do them. So I said, I, I got to figure something else that, and I know that having 23 pages of something doesn't work, mm -hmm. does not work. So maybe if you, we can just, you know, scope it down and start with an A to B, simple things to get you going. So if you need more transactions, call five past clients. If you don't understand how to build a geographic farm, then get help. It's not um, how, it's who. This gal is the who. This gal that we just saw what she does for a geographic farm. Bob McKinnon is a who. Good God, the guy's been doing this forever. And nothing goes out of date. The same stuff that he did 50 years ago, 47 years ago, I think, are still being done. Except that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't ride a horse anymore. Yeah. No horses. Today. Horses in neighborhoods without the bag at the back are not, yeah, they're they're not wired. It just doesn't work. Yeah. So his his last is um is to be think of yourself. There's a lot of different ways to think of yourself. Um, think of yourself as a Navy SEAL in your business, if you will, rather than a traditional, think of a Navy SEAL. Think of yourself rather than a regular foot soldier, maybe as maybe as a Green Beret. And for him, he says, think of yourself as a marlin instead of a bluegill, a blue marlin instead of a bluegill. So do we have a bunch of bluegills in this room? I don't know. But start thinking of yourself as a blue marlin and take that to, to what you're doing. So remember, money changes hands when problems are solved. And that's your job. Okay. So I have a question. Yes. I question a couple of things. You know that my my thing is, and we've done it every year on Mondays, except for when you bailed on me on Mondays. But 